Right, here's a, a quick overview of my freight manager program that I created to handle freight movements on the Peckford and Light Railway. Uh, I've used something called Live Code, which is based on uh, a product that used to come free with Apple Mac computers called HyperCard. It's a really interesting and dead easy to use programming um, uh, environment um, that's that's quite high level, almost conversational in its programming. So if you fancy dabbling around with it, just search for Live Code. It's freely available on the web. Right, here's my freight management program. Um, there are three main sections to it. Uh, this section where you store the locations on your railway, here where you create the and store the wagons on your railway, here you create the trains and here you can import and export stuff if you want to move uh, your um, settings from um, one computer to another for example. So here we go, edit locations. Um, here is the main location on my railway, Beeston Market, that's the interchange with the rest of the world basically. Um, so Beeston Market has a short name of BM, you'll see why, and it's also the central location. Again, you'll see why later. The next location on my railway is Beeston Castle, that's the next station down the line, with a short name of BC. Then I've got Peckforton, or PK, the mill siding, MS, Bukeley, BY, the copper mine, CM, and then finally Bickerton, BK. Um, I could change where these locations appear, the order in which they appear, by moving, promoting something further up the line or down the line, but obviously this is the ideal um, location for this location. So we go back to the main menu here now, and I'll show you the Wagons database. Um, this is the crux of the system, really. Um, in here are all the wagons that are on my line. I think I've got about ooh, nearly 60 now. Um, here's one of the open wagons with a coal load. Um, its code is OP01. Um, that comes out on the printout so that there's no doubt about which particular wagon this is. It has a length of one, that's a sort of relative length. Um, it uh, that, that's a lot of my wagons are based on um, Heartland Loco Works chassis and I've sort of decided this is my standard wagon length. Um, I could have wagons that are shorter than that by half its length uh, or much longer than that. Um, this is useful for making sure that when I'm making up a train I don't finish up with um, a, a train which is too long to fit in the run round or passing loops on the railway. Sometimes they, they are, because when you're going down and picking up wagons and dropping them off, um, where the length of the train can get bigger or shorter. Um, here's its present location at Peckforton. I can change where it's located, or I can take it out of service so that it won't run at all. Um, that's quite handy if you know a wheel drops off a wagon or, or, or its uh, coupling's broken or something. I can take it out of service for a while. So, um, I think it was Beckforton, doesn't really matter, I can uh, always move its location. Then we come to the, 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 the weightings, the likelihood this wagon's going to travel from one location to another. So let's just go across this top row here. Um, as you can see, um, BM, this is why we've got the short names, BM Beeston Market, um, there is no likelihood that it's going to stay at Beeston Market once it's there. So uh, it's, it's, this wagon's going to travel. It's got a 20% chance of going to Beeston Castle or Peckforton. Only a 10% chance it will go to the mill siding. 20% chance it will go to Bukeley. No chance of it ever going to the copper mine. And 20% chance of it going from Beeston Market to Bickerton. Now, it's the, the wagon will stay at those locations um, and eventually return to Beeston Market. It doesn't go anywhere else. It will just go from Beeston Market to those stations and then back to Beeston Market, which makes sense because 
that being the main interchange with the rest of the world, that's where the uh, the coal is delivered to. So you can see um, Peckforton, a 60% chance it's going to travel, so it's not going to stay long at Peckforton before it moves back to Beeston Market. Um, by uh, contrast, Beeston Castle here, it's got a 40% chance of travelling back, so it's going to stay a bit longer at Beeston Castle. The, the staff there are not particularly hard working, so uh, it takes them a bit longer to unload a wagon. Um, let's move along to a different wagon, um, one that's got a bit more of an interesting um, possibilities of where it's going to travel to and from. Here we've got another coal wagon. Um, it stays 10% chance it will stay at Beeston Market once it's there. Um, and then the usual weightings is going to have a slightly higher chance of going to Bickerton. Um, but it also, when it gets to Beeston Castle, has got a, a, a likelihood it could go back to Beeston Market, but it could go to Peckforton or Bukeley or a slight chance it could go to Bickerton. The thinking here is that once a coal wagon has been emptied, it might need to go to another location, perhaps to be loaded up with something else. Let's see what happens if I change the, the settings here. Um, let's say if it's from uh, uh, the mill siding. <clears throat> now, it, chances of it going to back to Beaston Market are only 10%. Um, it's got more chance of going on to Bukeley or Bickerton from there. Um, let's put in a setting here. Let's get a 20% chance that it could go to um, Beeston Castle. So we put that in, and then you'll notice that this number now has gone down. Um, it's 20% chance that it will stay. If I put in let's say to Peckforton, if I was to try and put 30% chance of it going from the mill siding to Peckforton, a 30% chance, if I try and enter that, it says, oh, oh, no, you can't do that. You cannot have over a 100% chance of it going somewhere. So um, let's put that back, well, let's put it back down to 10. And there we are. And so if it goes to the mill siding, chances are it could go hmm, anywhere. Um, apart from the copper mine. Um, that makes it a bit more interesting because the mill siding is quite a difficult siding to shunt in and out of and so it makes life a bit uh, more interesting when I'm running trains if I've got to stop and shunt something in or out of that siding. Okay, let's have a look at uh, another wagon. Um, here we've got the um, open wagon with a timber load it's got more chance of going to Peckforton, that's because that's where the sawmill is located, but <coughs> it could just as equally go to any of the other stations on the line. Maybe they need a delivery of sawn timber. Um, and then when it's at Peckforton, it could go back to Beeston Market, but it could just as easily go on to any of the other stations. Again, um, there's always uh, somebody wanting to uh, to build something, a, a shed or a house or something, and need a bit of timber. Um, and that's basically um, the, um, uh, the the heart of the system. Um, so if we go back now to the main menu, we come on to the interesting bit, and that's where we can start creating the trains. So if I click on that takes me to the create trains section. Here we can see here's a mixed train I created earlier and you can see in this that it's got a maximum length of four um, for wagons because it's going to be attached to uh, um, a passenger train. Explosive van is going to go from copper mine to Beeston Market. Now that's not going to be attached to the um, the mixed train because passenger trains don't go to the copper mine so that's more likely to be attached to one of the ore trains that's traveling up the line from the copper mine to Beeston Market. Cattle wagon, yeah interesting, Bickerton to Bukeley so obviously the uh, there's a need at Bukeley for uh, a cattle wagon so presumably it will run empty from Bickerton to Bukeley 
On the other hand, maybe Farmer Giles wants his cow to be delivered from Bickerton to Bukeley and is using the railway to do it. In actual fact, he could just as quick, quickly drive it down the road. It's only a couple of miles away. Timber wagons going from Peckforton to uh, Beeston Market and the agricultural flat, the, the load of agricultural equipment is going from Bukeley to Beeston Market. Uh, obviously, um, somebody's wanting to sell some of their old ploughs at the market. Let's create a train. Uh, let's do a pickup goods. And a pickup goods it could have a maximum length of eight. I tend to make the trains no longer than eight wagons because that's the sort of optimum length for the passing loops and run round loops on my railway. It's also, coincidentally, um, the maximum length that they used to run on the Welshpool Railway, which uh, was convenient. Um, do I want unload time? Yes. Um, I want the wagons to stay at their location and be unloaded rather than travel immediately back um, on uh, the next train. So uh, that um, just ensures that, uh, that, that the wagons um, stay for a little while before they move on. Um, how busy do we want the trains to the the trains to be? I like to keep a, a very busy schedule. If I move the slider down to very quiet, then um, there's very little movement of traffic, and so the um, uh, the trains are much shorter. But I like uh, doing a lot of shunting. So let's create a train. This time we'll have a down pickup goods. Um, and have a look and see what happens. Takes a little while for the system to calculate all the values. It's got to um, to go through each wagon and uh, look at its weighting and then do a calculation as to whether it's likely to travel or not. Um, here we can see we've got a couple of timber wagons going from Beeston Market to Peckforton. Also the bolster wagon is going to Peckforton, which of course is where the sawmill is. There's a load of cows going from Beeston Market down to Bukeley. Uh, a covered wagon going to Beeston Castle. A uh, closed van going to Bickerton. And uh, the builder's load from Beeston Market to Bickerton. And then the barrel wagon is going from... Um, Beeston Castle to Bickerton, that's where the Beeston Castle is where the brewery is, obviously. The uh, pubs in Bickerton need a delivery of beer. Um, if I don't like that train, I'm thinking, oh, that's a bit boring, there's a lot of stuff going from Beeston Market, not much else. Let's create another one and see if I can get something with a bit more interest in it. So it's cogitating, working out all the calculations and then deciding which is the um, greatest likelihood of travel. You can see this train is slightly shorter. That's probably because we've got a couple of long wagons. Yeah, we've got quite a few long wagons here. The cattle wagon, the timber wagon, the bolster wagon and the vans are all slightly longer than the optimum uh, one uh, wagon length. So that's made a slightly shorter train of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, we've got quite a few going from Beeston Market and the timber wagons. They really want that timber at, uh, at Peckforton. Um, so there's uh, there, those wagons appear again. Uh, and Beeston Castle, to bit they're really short of beer in Bickerton. Uh, that's, uh, that's coming up again. Let's create another one just to see if we get something a bit different. Here we go. Should be coming up any second now. Yeah, slightly longer. Um, we've got um, yeah the oh yeah Beeston Castle to Bickerton. It's it's a real high likelihood that uh, that wagon is going to travel. Um, if I think yeah that's going to be an interesting train to run. I've got a little bit of difference. I've got Beeston Castle here, Peckforton to uh, Bickerton. That will make life a bit interesting. I accept that train. Now the system changes the location of all those wagons to the destination that's shown here. So um, if we look on the wagons database we'll find that the, um, uh, the cows uh, in the IP engineering cattle wagon are now, is now at Peckford and those barrel, 
the, the barrel wagon will now be at uh, Bickerton and so on. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. I can now print that train out so that uh, I've got a hard copy that I can use when I'm out in the garden. Um, and I can go back to the main menu. Let's have a look. Let's see that that uh, barrel wagon has now moved to Bickerton. So if we go back to the main menu and go into the wagons database, let's have a look. There isn't a quick way of navigating through the wagons. Um, I suppose I could put a search button in, but there's no, you know, there isn't much need to um, to come back here. There we are. Yep, the barrels wagon has now moved to Bickerton, so that's where its current location. Beeston Castle to Bickerton, there's a 30% chance it's going to go to Bickerton. 40% um, chance it could go back to Beeston Market, so that's surprising that uh, that kept coming up. But anyway, that's the nature of the system, because it's, it's randomised, um, who knows what the calculations are going to throw up. Um, while we're here, um, I could print out um, a summary of uh, all the wagons in the system and show where they're located. So that's quite handy at the beginning of a session. If I can't remember where a particular wagon's supposed to be, I can, um, I can print this out and check that it's in the right location. Or I can reset it and that will send all the wagons back to Beeston Market. So I can, yeah, maybe at the beginning of the year, I can start off with everything back there. Uh, and that's basically all there is to it. Um, this button here enables me, I think I've said, to import and export if I've got um, the freight manager on more than one uh, computer. Um, I, the, I've made this freely available. It's it's only a homegrown job, so it's it's not nothing professional. Um, if you look on my blog at the freight management system, you'll see that uh, I've got a Dropbox location where you can download this for Apple Mac computers or for Windows computers. And I think, well, I'm running it on Windows 10 and it seems to be working quite well. So I hope you've found this interesting.